welcome back to my channel. I know I've been gone for a severely long period of time and I'm sorry about that but you know life's life and I am back. Uh, today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and I'm going to be reviewing or starting a series where I review um, different TV shows or movies that are originally in different languages, um, just foreign films and TV shows that I think English speakers should watch. Um, I got really into this one called um, Skitten Snow, which is a Norwegian mini-series. Um, it's about eight episodes long, about 20 minutes each, and it is fantastic. Like I said, it's Norwegian, um, and uh, it is actually based off of a book by the same uh, name. And I really want to read the book now, so I'm trying to find an English version of the book so I can kind of compare it, which I thought that would be fun too. But anyways, I'm going to get into my review on Skid and Snow. And I will say, um, starting of this review, if you are sensitive or triggered by um, assault, sexual assault, physical assault, all of the above, I suggest not watching the show. I'm first off going to uh, read off a little part that was in a magazine that I find is to the T what this show is about without really giving away a lot of spoilers. So, uh, this story centers around 18 year old Samara, an ambunctious high school student who has the dreams of making a name for herself. However, her world comes crashing down when she is physically and sexually assaulted on her way home from work. With a strict Pakistani background, Samara not only has to deal with the trauma and shame of what happened, but also with the knowledge that will impact her family and her reputation within the community. But I will say at this moment now that spoilers will be starting now. So if, so if you've not seen this show, I suggest watching it and then coming back to my review if you want. If you have any other suggestions for shows, movies, things like that for me to review, please put them in the comments down below and we shall get started. It's like really rainy and cold right now where I live. So I got my tea and I don't care that it is still in a uh, Halloween mug. So it's middle of November and I don't care. This entire show is really talking about um, religion and background and sexual and physical assault, which I think is a great concept of talking about assault in um, assault and religion in it, um, especially with a Pakistani background, which I thought was very unique. Um, a lot of the time when you see a lot of these shows and movies, it's a lot of just Caucasian people, and I really like that they did that instead and talked about that kind of problem nowadays about what is going on with sexual and physical assault. I'm going to go into characters and how I felt about each character. So throughout the entire show, you meet a character named Nadia or Nalia. Um, who is a mystery throughout the entire time and I was very confused by this and what actually happened but you will find out in the end from her brother Wasman that uh, Nadia was raped and is now pregnant and a lot of people thought she was um, sleeping around and was very much just not respecting her culture but really in reality she was raped and she ended up killing herself and you end up finding that out in episode 7, I believe, and it is absolutely like devastating. Um, you can see um, Samara really has like visions about her, and you can see that Nadia is trying to tell her what is going on. And so Samara is a 18-year-old high school student who is, who is very unbunctious. Um, she goes to school, she works at Burger King that's in a mall, and she studies very hard. Um, She's also from a strict Pakistani background. She has two really good friends, um, Amber and Analia, which I hope I'm pronouncing their names right. I will say that now I am going to be pronouncing people's names wrong. I am trying my best. Where, um, as you see at the beginning of this show, they are really, really good friends and I think the friendship that they have is absolutely adorable and they're very trusting towards each other and they're very supportive. For each other. And I want to say Samara is literally such a strong person but she's also one of those people that I kept on kind of going like no just talk to them or talk to these people but she had a very big problem trying to talk to her parents about it and she ended up talking to her friends about her assault and 
it was absolutely devastating and when you know who her the person who assaulted her which we know that was Nicholas who's this boy that she had a really big crush on who's this Caucasian guy with the most bluest eyes I know um, that they mentioned that Taye is um, who's the actor who plays Nicholas he actually wore blue contacts for like kind of like an eerie effect because he's got lighter blue eyes but I loved that little detail to it to make it just so much more mysterious and creepy and weird but he is such a slimy bastard and I feel that Taye did a great job portraying this manipulated rape, a serial rapist basically. Um, you really got to see his manipulation and how he talked to certain people, how in when her, um, him and Samara are exchanging money because he blackmailed her. Um, you really got to see his version of just making himself the victim out of everything. Um, basically being like, oh, well, I fell for you and you didn't treat me right. You made me the victim. You hit me and you could have killed me. Like, you don't realize what you did. And making her feel bad for what she did, even though he's the one that assaulted her. And you really see his manipulation when he ends up showing up at Samara's house, having a conversation with her mother, and you could see that he's trying to be this sweet, kind person to her, and she's like, oh, he's such a good guy, and all these things, when really he is the person who assaulted her daughter, and she doesn't even know that he assaulted her, and she doesn't even know that she's been assaulted. Samara being so strong and trying to get out of this when she does escape Nicholas's apartment from when she was assaulted, um, she ends up telling her parents when she gets back home after being saved by a co-worker who we're going to talk about Charlotte a little bit later. You, she tells them that her bag got stolen and that's why none of her stuff's there which is like this fear of just not telling them what actually happened and knowing not Nadia's past of what did happen to her and how the world portrayed it, it makes you understand why Samara didn't tell her parents what actually happened she didn't want to bring shame on the family and which breaks my heart and the entire time the parents were like oh I hope that like, I'm really glad nothing bad happened to her and all this stuff and it just breaks my heart because something did happen to her and she can't even tell them Nicholas is also one of those people that is very smart in what he does he codes everything he programs everything that he cannot get caught and that he makes it seem like these people that he's assaulting wanted it and this is this is what happened um he's also very smart about not having social media he sticks to a strict schedule he goes home he works as a security guard at the mall which is the same mall Samara works at and he works out and the reason why he works out so much and eats healthy is because he is trying to really so when he is assaulting people and they try to run away or they try to get out of his grip he cannot because he's actually so strong because he is working out constantly to build up his muscle to really just combine these people <clears throat> now charlotte is actually a really interesting character at first i didn't like her and then i started to really love her um near the end of the series and it made me understand that she is trying to protect herself and something that did happen to her as well at the beginning of the show when you kind of watched her i always thought that maybe she was an ex-girlfriend or she was obsessed with nicholas and she didn't want somewhere to be with him and she had this weird like don't talk to him you can't do this blah 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 kind of attitude i always wondered what it was and later on as you guys know you find out that they were dating her and nicholas and they broke up uh, two months after they had a baby boy together and she realized that he is basically a monster. She found a lot of information about what happened, what he's been doing to these innocent women and she tries to, um, she tries to confront him about it and he ends up almost assaulting her and locking her in the bedroom and assaulting her probably. You don't really get to see the actual, um, assault of her or what happened with her but when the girls are going through his computer when they finally get into his uh, apartment you see the just utter like you see the emotion in Charlotte's face 
of when they find out that she was also a victim of him and seeing her picture on the computer like really just brought her back to when that did happen. When she was saying Samara about that whole story, she mentioned that she didn't do anything about it, she didn't want to do anything about it because their son Isaac was in the other room with Nicholas. And I just want to say a side note to that. Um, I don't know if it's in the book or if it is mentioned in the book at all. If there is a baby, I've heard that the baby actually doesn't exist in the book. But if he doesn't and they made a name and they made the baby up, I am very happy that they used Isaac because if you don't watch any Norwegian television, you, you would know that Taria actually played a boy named Isaac in the Norwegian TV show called Skam. But literally if they did that that is kind of like a cool like backstory to it so if they did or didn't it's kind of a cool little like fact to it but you realize that really all that she is trying to do is save herself and save her son um she lives with her mom now it, ma it made it kind of clear that she did live with nicholas for a portion of time she still had a key to his apartment but you can tell even probably with their relationship he was quite manipulative and made it seem like nothing was happening when he was actually assaulting these women. I will say out of context, just seeing Nicholas with the baby and uh, communicating with the baby and holding the baby was a very like sweet moment, but then you go back into it going like, oh my god, this is a rapist and he's holding a little baby and it's just, oh, like it was crazy and when they found out about that, all the girls told Samara, like they were just like, holy crap. Samara was actually quite mad because when Charlotte went to pick her up after her assault, she ended up finding her because she knew this was happening. Like, she understood that something was about to happen and she was trying to get there in time and she never did. And when she picked her up, she was like, oh, like, did he do anything? Like, I've heard rumors. That is her kind of cover up of what she was kind of saying about, like, I know what he's been doing because I literally witnessed it. Of course, at the end of it all, Charlotte does help out the girls and gets enough proof to possibly convict him if they do go to the police. But at the end, she's probably one of my favorite characters just because of her character development. You really see her go from one character to the other and you can see that she's really trying to be just a mother to her son and try to be there for him and have him grow up in a life possibly without his dad. You can tell that she's frightened half the time. When Nicholas confronts her about them taking the hard drive, which they do, um, he tries to threaten her, but of course, since he's in front of her mom, he makes it seem like everything's all hunky-dory and hugs her and gives her mom a smile and says hello and have a good day kind of thing, making this charm of who he is. And you really get to see this manipulation of him. Now we're going to talk about Amber. Amber is uh, such a sweet girl. You can tell that she is such a good friend to Samara. And once they found out about her assault, she felt so guilty because she had given Samara's address to Nicholas because she thought, hey, like we're friends and stuff like that. And I feel so bad for her because now she feels like I've just did, done something and now he's going to come after her more than usual. Amber tries all she can to really kind of go to the police and try to report Samara's assault without actually saying her name or exactly what happened and I know you probably think that's it's not going to work and of course it didn't but you can really tell that when she's looking up all this stuff about sexual assault and what happens with it and she really finds out that a lot of people get off scot-free like and it's such a sad reality about assault and how a lot of people get away with it and it's very true so you really get to see that side of just that he could get away with it and do it again and it's very very scary then we're going to go on to analia or analia i'm very sorry i'm going to be pronouncing her name wrong but she is such a fighting girl since day one that she knew about the assault she was stalking nicholas to just find out his ish and what is actually going on and what she can do to basically catch this guy and make him pay for what he did to her best friend. We really get to see that she really comes also from a strict Pakistani background and that when she's not home her dad is very mad with her. She tries to help out her mom but her dad's like very offensive about things. You can tell that 
he thinks something is up and you can see that she's trying to make the best for her family but she's also trying to help her best friend um, she's also very smart in the part where she actually got caught by Nicholas, and she did the right thing of calling her mom while she was talking to Nicholas because she was confined in the place and calling and being like oh don't worry like I, I lost my bag um, but don't worry this really nice security guard at this mall his name's Nicholas like gave all the information that he, she did so that if something did happen to her someone knew about it at least. Next we're gonna go on to two kind of secondary characters we're gonna go off with Samara's brother Alfie which I hope I'm pronouncing his name right and um, Nadia's brother Wasman. They are arch enemies basically the entire time. You can tell that Effie has a very, very strong dislike towards Wasman, and you find out that Wasman actually did go to prison for some time, which of course is ruining the reputation of his family. Again, since he is also the brother of Nadia, Nadia, since he is also the brother of Nadia, and what she did. Um, of course, there is a lot of reputation around his family and Elfie really just dislikes everything that is with that family. What's also very sad is that there was a lot of rumors going around that Wasman actually hurt his sister or was the reason behind his sister's actions, which I think is very, very sad. And a lot of the time he is trying to prove it. And near the end of the show, you really do find out, of course, what happened to Nadia, but his reaction behind everything. He actually and his family kept her suicide a secret for a really long time which broke my heart that this girl killed herself over everything that was happening and how he was saying that no one believed her and he wished that he could go back and say that he believed her at least which again it's such a heartbreaking sad show. You can tell that Busman wasn't always there for Nadia and he wishes that he was and now that she's gone he really wishes that he was there for her. Now on the opposite side Elfie is the exact opposite basically. He is constantly there for his sister, he is constantly making sure she's okay and everything and he really makes sure that she doesn't hang out with people that are going to cause her harm which is also Wasman. So when he finds out what that Wasman is actually talking with her and they talk about um, they were talking about Nadia and stuff, he didn't know that they were talking about that and he actually freaking tried to punch the crap out of him and he's like you need to talk to your sister there is something up. Once he finds out through Samara that Nadia was raped, he is very concerned that something happened to Samara as well. Um, he helps them try to break into this hard drive that will have probably a film or video of an assault that they could take to the police for arresting Nicholas. Overall, I really, really did enjoy this show. I really do appreciate that they touched on such sensitive topics like um, assault in every form and talking about people that have a religious background where they cannot come forward and talk about this. I love the character development of a lot of these girls and I also am so proud of these girls for what they did and tried to get through this whole process of trying to convict Nicholas. I will say out of the whole thing, Nicholas and Charlotte were two of my favorite characters. Nicholas was such a manipulating bastard that every single time he was on screen I wanted to punch him and I severely love this actor. I think he's a great actor. I want to give props to Taria who played Nicholas. He did a fantastic job because last time I ever saw him he was a sweet lovable little puppy dog of a character named Isaac so he did such a great job. The manipulation and the way that he talked was so eerie and mysterious and creepy and the way that he could switch in a matter of three seconds to this charm of just like happiness and just making everyone love him and just feel his energy. Charlotte, on the other hand, I severely loved as well for her character development. She really went from a character who you didn't understand and were kind of a little bit mad with, you were just like, why would you be like that, to understanding why she does her actions as well. I will say some cons to this is actually I did not really like severely the last episode, episode 8. When watching it, I felt like it went maybe a little too rushed and I felt like a lot of things weren't adding up or weren't really like I don't want to say tied into a little bit of a bow but it just felt really weird and there wasn't really a good timeline of certain things. Of course we find Samara and she's in the house and they rescue her and everything but then also you don't know if Nicholas is considered dead you do see that he has fallen 
from something and he could have died but he also could have lived so you don't really get that little closure of like what actually did happen to him if he did die i would have liked um maybe a scene with charlotte and their son isaac maybe going to his grave or something along that line of just showing that she's gonna be a single mom and support her son and just really um paves the way of what this little kid's gonna have in the future of like who his dad was also there was this whole thing about nadia leaving the country and you only just find out at the end like at the split end and you don't know like 100 percent why like i'm assuming it's just because maybe her dad wants to go back and he's very strict but you really don't understand why and then you don't know how long the um, distance has been between the um, attack that happened in the forest that potentially killed Nicholas to when she leaves. You don't know if it's the same day, the next day, a week later, you don't really know and then it's just kind of closed off with that. I wish that maybe there was a little bit of a closure where you know maybe as well with Samara and Charlotte hanging out a little bit more with maybe Amber. With that, I felt like it was very rushed and very ended and very done. And I don't know if that was maybe the point to be like, it's a to, to be continued maybe for a season two. There's nothing that's been kind of confirmed about that. But if it is just a one season show, it was kind of a little bit weird and abrupt of an end I found. Also with the hard drive, you never really see like what's on it you understand there is a film i know no one probably wants to see the film i will understand that but you never see anything like potentially it getting handed to the police or anonymously like sent to the police if it is nadia on there and nadia and nicholas on there nadia's dead and nicholas could be dead so if he isn't dead he can be arrested for that because now it's confirmed that he assaulted her so it's like I wish they did something with that or tried to crack it or anything but like I said it was very abrupt and I don't know if there's going to be a sec second season and if they do have a second season I hope they really do talk about these characters and if Nicholas is still alive I would love to have him in the next series or season to kind of like see what's going to happen. Um, overall I did love the show I just wasn't keen on the last episode and how rushed it was. I also really did love that a lot of a majority of the cast actually was uh, had a background a Pakistani background and really the only two like Caucasian characters was Nicholas and Charlotte and really just I love that they kind of dealt into the religion and talking about how like a lot of these things even people can't say and talk about because it, they will bring like kind of shame on their family kind of thing so for me i had to look into a lot of stuff because i didn't understand what was kind of going on and then when they kind of talked about it in the show you can kind of understand that it will bring shame on their family i will say with the trailer of this show you you do not know at all that nicholas is the reason behind anything she's he's not even shown in the actual um trailer at all and you show and it kind of like twists it around to make it seem like Wasman well, is the person behind everything and you really kind of do this um guy probably did do something bad like he did go to prison that was never elaborated on why he went to prison which I wish they did um but he has a kind heart and he's trying to be there for everyone now uh, no one's really believing him and then you got Nicholas who's a character that everyone's loving when they meet but really he's manipulative and a serial rapist so I do love that you kind of get this juxtaposition of these two characters and how people are portraying them on the outside anyways if you have seen the show please put your comments down below and tell me what you thought of the show um, as well as if you want to see any more of these kind of reviews on foreign films or TV shows please comment them down below and I would love to check them out. I really do want to do a series on SCOM because it was actually one of my first Norwegian films or shows that I really watched and it also again has one of the actors in it and I would love to talk about that one so if you do want me to talk about that um, comment down below again. Give this video a like and possibly subscribe that would be great and if you want to follow me on any other social media I will have it down below as well as some of my other channels. Um, 
I hope you guys are having a great day and remember it's never too late to get your shit together <laughs> anyways have a great day guys and I'll see you in the next video bye